It's good for the brain, good for the heart, good for the muscles, good for libido, good for energy, good for mood. It's like, you name it, everybody, it's Dr. Sam Robbins. And today I'm going to talk about the fact that I have been taking steroids for many years. I take it every morning. Um, and this all came about because um, I did a blood test and my levels were very low for this uh, specific hormone. So... I was shocked because I thought I was doing everything correctly and uh, it was low. So, um, and it explained why um, my energy levels weren't as good. I was sometimes getting sick when I shouldn't be getting sick. Just things didn't feel right. And, uh, and years and years ago, when I did the test, the levels were normal. So why did it go down? So, um, now, now, I'm not talking about steroids such as testosterone, or even though this one does affect testosterone, I'm not talking about Androlone, Trenbolone, Danabol, any of that. I'm talking about vitamin D. Yep, vitamin D is not a vitamin. It is a steroid. That's how powerful it is. And it does, in fact... Um, interact with other steroid hormones, such as testosterone for us guys and other female hormones too. And I mentioned this because guys, people who have low levels of vitamin D levels, um, also typically also have correlated to having low levels of testosterone. Now, vitamin D is typically, um, if you didn't know, most people are actually have low levels or they're actually deficient. And most people are definitely sub optimal levels. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Mine was actually like really on the borderline low. It was like 27 or something. I think the range and the range differs from everyone. It was like three thirty to hundred. And it again, differs based on the, the company that you're doing the blood test with. So keep that in mind. Um, also different needs from different ages and races also come into effect when you talk about vitamin D levels. Um, I know a lot of people will talk about it, but most people are low on vitamin D. I have so many women who are even, I have a friend walking dogs all the time. She's outside, this, that, and the other thing, and she has low levels of vitamin D. She's literally walking outside all the time. And I mentioned outside because we, the sun, you know, through ultraviolet, it gets the skin, and that's how you make vitamin D. It's really hard to get it from foods. And I've done videos about this, and I'll give you links to more about this um, in a, at the end of this video. So... What happens, you know, vitamin D, I said, interacts with so many other factors. And at the end, it is a, a hormone, and that's why it's so powerful. Now, when I was younger, I would be outside. Now, in the, in the, in the 80s and 90s, I just oil up and tan, like, as much as I could. And then other times, I would just go to the tanning salon. Um, not a good idea if you want good skin. So that's the other reason. Over the years, I don't go outside as much. Uh, because of work, obviously, it's not also convenient for me to go outside in the sun. For you to get optimal levels of vitamin D, you'd have to go in the sun between like 10 and 2. So that around noon, high noon, most of us are working at that time. Also, if the weather's cold, you're not, it's like really not convenient. And just getting it on your hands or face like this isn't going to do anything. And you also don't want ultraviolet on your face, really, because it does it does cause wrinkling. So ideally, you would have it on big body parts like your legs and chest and back. And again, you need at least 15, 20 to 30 minutes a day. Again, um, if it's summertime, it, you absorb more. The, the, the ultraviolet is more intense. During noon, it's more intense. But if you go at like 3 in the afternoon during the winter, you got to be, be out there for at least an hour or two. So keep that in mind. If you're higher body fat, you're not going to absorb vitamin D levels from the sun as much. Um, uh, African-American, darker skin, black people, they need more vitamin D uh, than, let's say, the average white person. Like, a well, super white person needs needs um, less vitamin D, but darker skin needs more vitamin D. Um, if you're hormone deficient, if you're older, you require more vitamin D levels. So all these taking into account, my vitamin D levels were low, so I started adding to it. And uh, I just took a vitamin D pill. And I'm like, oh, this has it, my multivitamin, or maybe I'll add a, a thousand units or whatever. And I did a blood test six months later, and they were still not good. And maybe my body wasn't absorbing it. So I did more research. And I realized that there isn't, a, it's really hard to overdose on vitamin D levels. 
Now, again, vitamin D has so many benefits. Um, I've listed them in another video. Uh, one important factor is the immune system. For example, whenever I feel like I'm coming down with something, I like triple my dose of vitamin D. Other thing is when I mentioned vitamin D, it should be vitamin D3 when you take it. And I take in a supplement for because I'm just not going to get in the sun. I gave up on that. So you want to take vitamin D3. You also want to take it with vitamin K2. Why? Because too much vitamin D will increase calcium deposits in the arteries and veins and so forth, sometimes in the bone. For example, my friend took um, high levels of vitamin D. His vitamin D levels were finally normal. And then after like maybe a few months, he started getting like a little bone spurs. And he, you know, so then the doctor's like, oh, hey, your vitamin K levels are low. You should be taking that with that. So the minute he added vitamin K, six months, seven months, eight months later, his bone spurs disappeared. So that was a good thing. So you need to take vitamin D3 with K2. I I posted the, the supplement I take below if you want additional coupons, if you want to give it a try. But they're all typically vitamin D comes in um, like gel caps, right? Uh, because it is a fat soluble vitamin. So always take your vitamin D with food. And I take it in the morning because I think it does give you a little bit of energy. Take it in the morning with food. So that's when I take it. Um, but the problem with the gel caps is that it's, it's, it's made from oil and sheep skin. I mean, the, the, the hair from sheep, you know, it's, 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 it's not as, it can go rancid. Uh, and so I ended up using a plant based vitamin D gets absorbed even better because it, it's, uh, micro, uh, encapsulated and it comes with vitamin D and vitamin K2. So that's the one I take. And lo and behold, my absorption rate improved my vitamin D levels are now at the upper end. It's like 60, 70, 80 um, when you do the test. And what should the levels be? I told you, depends on the company. It's like 30 to 100 is the range. I like it on the very high end. I like it at least 70 or 80. Again, it's got so many benefits. It's really, really high, hard to overdose on vitamin D. Uh, it's good for the brain, good for the heart, good for the muscles, good for libido, good for energy, good for mood. It's like, you name it. Vitamin D is good. Why? Because it is a hormone, a steroid hormone. A steroid is any four ring structure. Uh, estrogen is a steroid, for example. Uh, cortisol, the stress hormone is a steroid and testosterone. Obviously, you know, people know that one is a steroid. So I mentioned that I do take it every day. Uh, first thing in the morning, I personally take uh, about 10,000 units. For me, that tends to be, well, I take it with food, and that gets my levels around 70 or 80. Ironically, uh, my mom only needs to take 5,000 units, and she's old. She's in her mid-80s, and she has almost the same range as I do. So when in doubt, start with around 5,000 if you want, add in a little bit more. Of course, the ideal way to do it is you do it for three to six months. You do a blood test, uh, and... Um, you see your vitamin D levels that way. That's the best way to do it. Uh, but again, if you're not doing it, most people aren't, don't have access to doing a blood test right, right now, don't have the time. So again, you can't really go wrong. And even though it's a fat soluble, you know, technically you can overdose, but you can't. They've done people have taken a hundred thousand units for a year and there's no toxicity. So it's definitely one of those that I suggest people take. There's a lot of um, specific vitamins and minerals I suggest people take. Most of us are deficient. For example, magnesium is one of those and vitamin C. That's a whole other video. But take vitamin D3, take it with K2. I put the link below, the additional coupons for the ones I take. And I put another video about all the benefits of um, taking vitamin D3 if this wasn't enough and uh, potential problems when you lack it. And yes, um, having suboptimal levels of vitamin D3 has been linked to other uh, potential uh, diseases and problems and even cancers. So keep that in mind. I hope you take action. Don't just listen. If this was helpful, go ahead and do me a favor and just subscribe to the channel. That's it. Nothing else. And take a look at the links below in the description area. As always, thanks for watching. Wishing you a very happy and healthy day.